What's going on YouTube? Welcome back to all my cloud scholars out there. My name is Kieran Truss and I'm your host once again here at the Cloud Scholars page. Uh, we are in our Azure Sentinel um, series. This is part three. Part one, we did what is Microsoft Sentinel. Part two, I showed you how to deploy um, Azure Sentinel. And part three is best practices for Microsoft Sentinel. So some of you may be thinking, well, we should have went through best practices before we did the deployment, but this is going to be something simple for a lab. So that's the reason why I did it this way. But I thought it was very important to talk about some of the best practices when it comes to the workspace architecture for your Azure Sentinel. So let's jump right into it. So um, for single tenant designs, I'm going to leave a link in the description and you can see some of this information in the Microsoft documentation. But what Microsoft recommends is a using a single security workspace in your tenant for your Sentinel needs. It's important for me to call out security workspace. You may have uh, many or workspace in your organization. They may be pulling performance metrics. The log analytics workspace should be for security only so that RBAC can be configured correctly. So I mentioned this a little bit in part two where I was talking about the log analytics workspaces and I've worked with many clients. And one of the things that, um, that we run into is they always ask about log analytics workspaces. And another question I get or something that I see, I should say is clients have a ton of workspaces. And they don't really understand how the log analytics workspace works. So there's two different modes within log analytics workspace, uh, which is the one is the default mode where you would have access to all of that workspace. And I talk about this in my log analytics workspace series that I did um, as well. And then their second one is the resource context. So that one is more granular. What happens with workspaces, you have a team that is watching the performance of that specific uh, log analytics workspace. And if you have it in the default mode, they will have access to the whole workspace rather than having it in resource context where you can now separate that table and allow people only to have access to certain sections within your log analytics workspace. So please keep that in mind. So then there's multi-tenant design. Uh, if you have multiple tenants, such as if you're a managed service, uh, security service provider, uh, we recommend that you create at least one workspace for each Microsoft Entra tenant to support built-in service-to-service -service data connectors that work in only with their own Microsoft Entra tenant. So this kind of goes back to what I was talking about with the Log Analytics workspace. So what they're saying here is you need to have each Log Analytics workspace associated with that specific tenant. You're not going to be able to do like cross tenant. So it's due to data ingestions. Uh, if you do have a lot of Microsoft uh, Sentinel uh, tools that you need to uh, manage, you want to see them in one, uh, pretty much one view, uh, suggest you use an Azure Lighthouse so that this way you can now see all your different Sentinel uh, resources uh, in one space. So let's talk a little bit about regions. All right, so this is very important. Uh, use separate Microsoft Sentinel instances for each region. While Microsoft Sentinel can be used in multiple regions, you might have to re requirements to separate data by teams, uh, region or site or regulations and controls that make multi-region model impossible or complex that you then needed. Uh, use separate instances and workspaces for each region helps to avoid bandwidth egress costs for moving data across regions. Okay, so let's take a look at this uh, quick diagram that I did. Um, nothing fancy, I'm not Picasso here. But we have a, a VPC in the United States, that's your Azure uh, region. Um, and then you also have a VPC, a virtual private cloud within the London region for those users. And what's going on here is you're sending the data and that's why the arrow is there. And your Azure Sentinel is deployed within the United States. And you're sending all those logs and those data over to a log analytics workspace in Azure Sentinel. So what they were talking about was that egress cost is that cost of sending that information out and that data is going to be substantial because you need to send it way over to another region. Another thing that you're going to be worried about here, not only when it comes to cost, but you're also looking at compliance. There are different regulations based on where the data resides and what country it resides in. So that is going to make it extremely complicated. It's going to make it extremely difficult for your staff when you're sending data over and the data resides in one local region. So you need to make sure you're staying within compliance. So now compliance considerations. After your data is collected, stored, and processed, compliance can become an important design requirement with a significant impact on your Microsoft Sentinel architecture. Having the ability to validate and prove who has access to what data under all conditions is a critical data sovereignty requirement in many countries and regions. 
and assessing risk and get insights in Microsoft Sentinel workflows is a priority for many customers. So make sure that you're setting up your Sentinel that you have it in different regions. And I know some people are like, well, you know, I really don't feel like having to look at all those different Sentinels. But one of the things you don't want to do is be fined. That is going to be a worse day for you and the whole company. So we talk a little bit about cost management. So costs that might accrue after resource deletion. So this is one I wanted to point out because within Azure, there's it's so easy to forget that you deployed something. It's so easy to get accrue um, cost. And, you know, um, one of the things that I notice is that when I go and I do a client, that they'll have resources that are deployed that they're not using and this is recurring a cost. So what I wanted to call out is that uh, removing the Sentinel workspace doesn't delete the Log Alex workspace that was once connected to the Sentinel. So Sentinel and Log Alex workspace are two different resources, but they work together. Sentinel needs a workspace in order for it to be able to do the data ingestion. So it's really important that you understand just because you deleted Sentinel, that data that was associated with the Log Alex workspace is still there. Um, so there's two ways to pay for your logs uh, within Sentinel. So you can do this pay as you go model, um, which is great if you're not doing too much, like what we're doing here for this series, fine. But then there are commitment tiers, which is extremely important for you to understand how to use that. And you can do the commitment tiers. Um, let's just say you were using a log analytics workspace, you can do commitment tiers there. And then also not even just that, you can do your commitment tiers within Sentinel. So let's jump over to the Azure portal um, and let me show you exactly how that works. All right, so now we're over at the portal. Let's jump over to Microsoft Sentinel and we're going to go to our Sentinel. So this is our Sentinel workspace, as we called it. And over here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go all the way down to settings. So right now we still don't have anything much going on with our Sentinel. We still need to prop it up a little bit more. So if you go to settings, you have different things. You have pricing, you have settings, you have workspace settings, all this other stuff that shows up. It pulled me out of it. Um, but this brings you back to our Log Alex workspace. I don't really want to go there. Um, so right now, as you see, it's pay as you go $4.30 per gig. That's the current model. Remember, I am still under that 30 days of the free trial. So if I stay under 10 gigs, I should be fine. Um, so if I wanted to switch this up, I can click on the 100 gigs and I can click apply. Right. But you got to keep that in mind that even if we go ahead with this tier, once we one thing I wanted you to keep in mind is that once you go ahead with this tier, you have 30 days until you can now switch it out again. So you can't go and uh, click apply here and then try to click apply somewhere else and say, oh, I've chosen the wrong tier. You're going to have to wait in, in order for you to make that change. So that's just something I wanted to point out. So this is how you could go about your changes here. But let's go to our workspace, our log analytics workspace. Now we're here. And if you go to usage and estimate cost, Right here, you could put a daily cap and then you can say, okay, I want it on. And then you could put a daily cap for the daily volume cap or what you want to spend. So that's a way for you to save on some costs for your LogX workspace and your Sentinel. So you can just do it here for your Sentinel, but I did want to show you exactly how you go about doing a cap within your LogX workspace. So that was commitment tiers. Uh, use commitment tiers so that you can get a discount on the amount of data that you are ingesting. Once you apply a discounted tier, it's set and you cannot go lower than that tier for the next 30 days. All right. So we've reached our last slide, which is talking about technical best practices. So they say when naming your workspace, include Microsoft Sentinel or some other indicator in the name so that it's easy identified amongst you, your, you, your other workspaces, which is very true. I called it MS Sentinel, I believe, and then Sentinel Workspace for the Log Analytics Workspace. So um, we definitely want to make sure you're doing that because it's so you don't want to have a workspace and you're doing data ingestion. You should be able to, you know, be able to view it and say, oh, okay, this is what this and the purpose of this workspace. Uh, use the same workspace for, for both Microsoft Sentinel and Microsoft Defender for Cloud. So this is very great because now you can get all the data that's collected by Microsoft Defender and also be able to view the, your data for your other resources um, and also pull all that out and then be able to view that in Microsoft Sentinel and you can work with Defender for Cloud as well. So it's extremely important. Um, I really like this um, best practice that Microsoft provides. Um, it's a very smart way of going about managing your infrastructure. And the last is use a dedicated workspace cluster if your projected data ingestion is around or more than one terabyte per day. A dedicated cluster enables you to secure resources for your Microsoft Sentinel data, which enable better query performance for large data sets. So if you have a lot of data sets that you 
you would definitely want to use the dedicated cluster in order for you to pull those query results um, for your um, Sentinel um, needs. So that is the end of this video. Uh, this is the best practices for using Azure Sentinel. There are tons of other uh, stuff that I could put in here, but we only have a certain amount of time. So if there's anything that you have, any questions regarding what was spoke about in this video, or even if there's something that I didn't mention that you want to just you know call out, uh, we are a community here at Cloud Scholars. So we're just helping everybody else get better and then also helping you land that job that you need to land. So that's exactly what I want to be able to do for you for within uh, the Cloud Scholars. So if you have any questions or concerns, please leave it in the comment section. If you haven't done so already, please smash that like and subscribe button. It definitely helps me out with the YouTube algorithm so more people can view the content and more people can and help this community grow. As always, once again, my name is Kieran Tross. And my goal here at Cloud Scholars is to get you from scholar to consultant and, of course, consultant to expert. Thank you and see you next time.